Yeah. Yeah, all right. No one cares who I was until I put on the mask. I know it's on. I know Kurtz has acted a video on this topic already, and don't worry, this isn't just going to rehash their video. So I understand we all draw from the same well. I actually wanted to approach this from a completely different angle. See, when we ask the people died because of Chernobyl, or even what were the consequences of Chernobyl, we're not really asking that. Put a pin in that, we'll come back to that later. Oh, <laughs> you better believe we'll come back to that later. Right now, let's just look at the health aspects of Chernobyl, specifically bad health outcomes. Like death. Chernobyl was, by some margin, the worst nuclear disaster in the history of humankind. People don't seem to realize how world-changing the Chernobyl nuclear disaster actually was, including, but not limited to, Oh, I thought there was more than that. One of the major sticking points around Chernobyl is its overall death toll. There have been numerous attempts to calculate the long-term death toll caused by the Chernobyl nuclear accident, and all of them have produced very different numbers. The 2005 World Health Organization projected death rate stands at between 4 and 9,000. Estimates from the International Journal of Cancer put the projected death toll at 16,000 by 2065. The Union of Concerned Scientists estimated the projected global death toll at 27,000. The Ukrainian NRCRM says the Ukrainian government pays widow benefits to more than 35,000 people who have partners with deaths related to the Chernobyl catastrophe, which puts the death toll at 36,525 for Ukraine alone. A report commissioned by European Green Group in the EU Parliament, conducted by radiation scientist Ian Farrelly, um, I have since learned that it is pronounced fairly, not Farrelly, puts this in good stead for all the Russian names, doesn't it? Put the projected death toll between 30 and 60,000. They updated this in 2016 and revised their number down to 40,000, arguing that Cardis' paper on the subject had an uncertainty between 6,000 and 38,000 due to the difficulty projecting long-term cancer rates and mortality linked to Chernobyl. Shockingly for the Greens, they chose the higher estimate. Greenpeace, perhaps unsurprisingly, put their number at 93,000 for cancer-related deaths and 200,000 excess deaths. One very controversial report by Yapkolov in the Annals of the New York Academy of Sciences estimated between 112 and 125,000 people had died by 2005, and the wider death toll could be up to a million people. Put a pin in that, we're coming back to it. No scientific report has put the numbers anywhere in the range of what Greenpeace and Yablokov are proposing, and I'm not going to treat them with any sort of legitimacy here. But even so, that's a huge spread in numbers from papers within the bounds of scientific possibility. So what's going on? Why is there so much spread in the data? Calculating the Chernobyl death toll actually requires a few things. First, we need to establish what actually causes deaths in nuclear accidents. Beyond grievous bodily harm caused by any explosion, one of the major concerns for people is radiation. High-energy radiation, called ionizing radiation, has enough energy to damage the DNA in your cells, and that can lead to things like cancer. Death. Our best data on what radiation exposure does to a person comes from atomic bomb survivors from Japan, high-level exposure of full-body external radiation. But we've known about the dangers of low-level radiation exposure for a while. In the book Radium Girls, historian Kate Moore tells the story of the women employed in the radium dial factories, painting watches and dials on military equipment. Radium was useful for military equipment because it glows in the dark. The paint